back everyone, I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and we're going to start off this advanced series with one of the easier topics in this playlist, which is view modifiers. And in SwiftUI, we actually use view modifiers all the time. Every time you call dot .font, dot .foreground color, dot .background color, those are actually view modifiers. And what they do is they take the current view, they add a modifier, and then return a modified view. So all view modifier is, is basically taking the current content, adding something to it, and then returning it back to the view. So, so far in my courses, we have just stacked view modifiers on each other. And if, for example, we wanted to create the same style or the same formatting on like a button in multiple views, so far we would have just copied all those modifiers onto all of our views. But what's actually more efficient and you should use in your apps is a custom view modifier. So by creating a custom view modifier, we can actually stack a bunch of regular modifiers together to create a really unique and custom formatting. And there is a lot of benefits to doing this in our code, but the most important is probably reusability. Because by using custom view modifiers, we can really control how we want all of the views in our app to look, and we can get all of those views to refer back to a single source of truth for how that button or that view should look. So it's easier to update, it's easier to maintain, and it's easier to code because once we have it implemented, it takes one line of code to add a custom view modifier. So many of you probably already know about this, but I have not covered them yet, so I wanted to get this out of the way before we move into harder stuff. All right, so let's jump into Xcode and get coding. All right, welcome back everyone. So it's been a while since I've made a coding video. Uh, let's start this course off just like we started the other ones. Let's open up Xcode. Let's create a new Xcode project and it's going to be an iOS project. We're just going to use a regular app and let's click next. The product name here, I'm going to call this Swift Full Thinking Advanced Learning. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, we've been through this before, but the team, it's okay if you have none, but you can put your team there. The organization identifier is com dot and then your name, your team name, your organization name, and then the bundle identifier will automatically populate with your organization identifier dot and then the name of your project. The important thing on this screen is to make sure that the interface is Swift UI, the lifecycle is Swift UI app, and the language of course is Swift. Now we are going to use CloudKit and we are going to use tests in this course, but we do not need to check these boxes right now. We're gonna add that code ourselves. So you can leave this unchecked, go ahead and click next and find where on your computer you wanna save this project. Once you find a folder, go ahead and click create and let's jump into the project here. Let's make it full screen. The first thing I like to do is click resume on the canvas just to make sure that it is all connected. I'm going to go up top here and change the preview device to an iPhone 12 just because it, I think it looks a little better. All right, and let's create a file for this video. So I'm going to right click the navigator as we always do. Let's create a new file and you probably guessed it. It's going to be a Swift UI view. Let's call this view modifier bootcamp and let's click create. While we're in here, let's again click resume on the canvas, make sure this is all connected and I'm going to right click on the content view file and I'm going to delete it because we don't need the content view in this project. I'm going to also jump in to the Swiftful Thinking Advanced Learning app.swift file and change the first view from the content view, which we no longer have, to the view modifier bootcamp view. Let's go back into the view modifier bootcamp. Again, click resume and let's do some coding. So many of you are probably are already familiar with view modifiers. Uh, I had debated covering them earlier in my courses, but I think this is a good, easy first step into this advanced course. So we're going to start pretty simply by creating a V stack here and in the V stack, let's put a very simple text that says, hello world. 
On this text, let's add some modifiers. So let's do a font of maybe dot headline. Let's do a foreground color of, of white and maybe a background color of color dot blue. Before the background, let's add a dot frame with a height of 55. Let's add a frame with a max width of infinity. After the background, let's add a corner radius of 10 and maybe a shadow with another radius of 10. So let's finish it off with some padding just to push it from the edges. And we have this very simple button in our view now, which we have made many, many times before. You're probably wondering what we are actually doing here. But what we're gonna do is create a custom view modifier that basically incorporates all of these view modifiers in one line of code. And before we get into it, I'm gonna explain why we're doing this. So let's pretend like we had this button here, this hello world, and let's pretend like we wanted to use it on many different screens in our app. Well, with the current setup, every time we want something to look like this, we would basically copy this text, all the view modifiers, and then paste it somewhere else in our code. So down here, we could just do hello everyone, just to separate it. And then again, I could paste it down here, and we could maybe make this one just say hello. So this is pretty simple to just copy and paste all the modifiers, and it's really not that big of a deal. So if we're only using this once or twice in our app, that's fine, and we can just update it like this. We can copy, we can paste it. But the big problem becomes when we wanna do this a lot of times in our app, and if for some reason maybe we wanted to change one of these modifiers, if we wanted to change the title font, let's say, from headline to maybe a subheadline, if I wanted to do that in all the places where we have this button, I would basically need to go and find all the places where we have these modifiers in the code, and I would copy, and I would paste, and I would update manually. And this is obviously doable when we have these three, but you could imagine if this was a large project and you had a lot of files, this could be a lot of housekeeping. Just trying to make sure that you cover all of your edge cases and that all of the designs in your app are always staying in sync. So what's better than copying and pasting all of these modifiers a bunch of times is actually creating a single view modifier and then just updating that modifier. So let's scroll back up here and outside the view, I'm gonna create a new struct and I'm gonna call this default button view modifier. This will conform to view modifier and then I'll open the brackets. And just like we've created a bunch of views that conform to view, we're creating a view modifier that conforms to view modifier. And as you guys know, every time we create a view, we need to add a body. Every time we create a view modifier, we also need to add a body. And if I start typing body and I go down to this completion here, you can see that the body is just slightly different than the view body. And the difference is that this body comes with content and this body does not have any existing content. So in the view modifier, let's start by just returning the content. So basically we're gonna add this view modifier here and all we're gonna do is return the content as it is so it's not gonna actually look any different uh, than it currently does. So on this hello world text here, I'm gonna start by commenting all of this out. I'm gonna highlight it, I'm gonna hold the command button and click the backslash and comment this all out. Let's resume the canvas and you'll see that we just have our plain hello world here. And instead of adding these modifiers, I'm just going to add this one modifier. And to do that, we're gonna call dot modifier. And then we can put in a modifier here, which is going to be the default button view modifier. And I'm gonna open and close the parentheses uh, just so that we can initialize it. So this modifier is what we just built here. And all it is is returning the content as is. And that's why this looks exactly the same right now. But if I took this font modifier and added it onto the content, this modifier will actually return the content plus font of subheadline. And let's actually do headline. So we can see that the title updates here. And I want you to see that adding this font headline to the content is the exact same 
as if we just added dot font of headline onto this text. If so I add this text and I add this font of headline, this font of headline is actually its own view modifier and it's taking the content the content is all of the previously added things to it. So everything above this line, which is just the text, and that's the content that's going into this font, and then they're adding the font of headline after it. So I want you to realize that because this view modifier is nothing more than these view modifiers. It's just that we can stack a bunch together. So what we're gonna actually do here is I'm going to highlight all of these, comment them out, I'm going to cut them, let's delete the font here, and I'm going to just paste them onto the view modifier up here. Let's uncomment this, and now we can see how we have the exact same view except one line of code in our app. So if we wanted to copy this across all of our buttons, we could just copy and paste like this. And now if we ever need to update, you know, what this button looks like, let's say maybe we want to change this from blue to red, instead of having to go to each location where we implemented this, we can just go up to the view modifier and change it in one location. So this is so much more efficient and we only have to write this code out one time. Now you might be wondering why we need to add this dot modifier because when we add dot font or dot foreground color, we never have to call it dot modifier before. So why do we have to do it now? And the answer is simply because we have not made it a view extension for this modifier. And we can actually do that very, very simply. So up here in between these structs, I'm going to create an extension for view. And remember down here we are in a view, so we're going to extend view here. And we're, let's create a func. Let's call this with default button formatting. Open close parentheses, open the brackets. And this is going to return us some view. So just like the body returns some view, this function is going to return some view and it's going to return the current view, so self, and then we're gonna add dot modifier, and here we're gonna add our default button modifier. So it's returning the current view with this modifier on it. And because it's the current view, we actually don't even need to include the word self here, I just did it just to explain it to you guys. So I'm just gonna delete this, and we can just add modifier of default button modifier. So now, just like we can call very easily dot font or dot font weight, we can now call dot with default button formatting. And then I don't need this modifier at all. And when I click resume, it's still going to build. So you can see how awesome this is when we set up custom formatting, we can add we can create custom view modifiers and then create custom view extensions and then so easily, so quickly, we can add that to our text here, right? So if I'm building my app, all I need to do is add this text here and go dot with default formatting and in one second I have the exact button that I need and that is magic. And I just want to point out that when we create these view modifiers, we do really need to think about what modifiers we want to put in here because some might be better than others because for example this padding is great to make the buttons look good but the actual but the actual amount of padding that we want on each screen might differ so it could be an idea to not include the padding in the view modifier and instead maybe we just put padding or maybe some spacing in our v stack down here and padding around the outside uh, just just because that might make our view modifier a little bit more dynamic. Similarly, I also find that including the font inside the view modifier sometimes isn't perfect because uh, not every view can actually support a font. So I like to just leave the font out of a lot of these and then we can add the font ourselves. So we can add dot font of headline maybe down here, dot font 
of subheadline and then maybe that font of title. So now we can use the same view modifier, but we can also still customize the font. And the last thing I want to show you guys before we wrap up this video is that we can customize these view modifiers. So when we create a view, like we've done many, many times in my courses, there's a lot of times where we initialize it with certain parameters, like maybe let background color of type color. And every time we create that view, we need to initialize with a color. So I'm not going to do it here, but you've seen this before where we create a view and then we add a background color. And in that same exact way, we can do that for view modifiers. So I'm going to go up here to my view modifier and initialize it with a background color. And then I'm going to take that background color and I'm going to make that the background in the view modifier. So I'll make that the background here. And now every time we initialize this default button view modifier, it's going to ask us for a background color. So I'm going to fix it here. And I'm going to fix it down here as well. So what I call with default button formatting, right now there's no parameters in this function. So if I change this to dot blue, it's always going to be blue and we cannot actually customize it through this modifier here. But what we can do is actually pass in the color as a parameter to this function. So here I'll say background color of type color and I will pass that into the view modifier. And now we can fix this here. Let's do dot blue. Let's do dot orange and maybe dot pink. If I click resume, we can now customize our view modifier. So we have pretty much the same, so we have pretty much the same button, but with slight differences. And this might not seem that crazy right now, but when you start building larger apps, this, this is going to come in handy. So I'm gonna copy and just paste this down here so we get rid of the actual modifier. And we could even do something like where we give this a default color. So background color of type color, and we'll set it equal to dot blue. So if we don't pass in a background color, we'll just set it to blue. And now we can actually just call these without changing the color. So we can see here, if I click resume, it'll still be blue. Let's change these to orange, so they override. So when I add nothing here, it's going to default to blue. All right, and that's pretty much it for view modifiers. I know this was a fairly simple video, but you can go and basically stack as many modifiers as you want onto content, and then we can use these view modifiers very efficiently throughout our code. All right, guys, now you know how to use view modifiers. You know how to create extensions for those modifiers, and you can go and add this into your app, which should hopefully save you a lot of time and effort. And I do want to finally point out that if you watch this video and you got very confused and this was a challenge for you, it might be an idea to go watch some of my previous playlists on YouTube, which are much easier and much more beginner focused. This is an advanced playlist and this is going to be one of the easiest videos in this playlist. All right. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking and I'll see you in the next video.